from Isaiah. It's the call of Isaiah. And he's called into the presence of God where he knows he has no business. Holy, holy, holy. There are three. Three. God is holy. The Father is holy. The Son is holy. The Holy Spirit is holy. But there are not three holies, but one holy. And so this holy God makes us holy and sends us into the world. The first reading is Isaiah chapter 6, the first eight verses. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Unless you believe that Jesus is the Christ, Crucified, risen, ascended, Lord of all, you will not live with him in his kingdom now or on the new earth. The second lesson is from Acts chapter 2, various verses. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of all that we are witnesses. Being there exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, This Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter it a second time into his mother's womb and be born? 
Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound. You don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we've seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, <clears throat> Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter it a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound. You don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we've seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. My dog mate, your karma. Muslims, Jews, Buddhists, Christians, can we just occupy, can we just live in proximity to one another without killing each other? Is not what I hear uh, the coexist people that I know who, who with the bumper sticker, uh, are saying to me. And neither are they, neither do I hear them saying to me, uh, could we, could we, would we just be able to sit down and, and share the reason for the hope that we have that one day all people will live together in unity? That could we just sit down and, and share that one with another with uh, gentleness and respect as we listen to one another and, and, and as we present what that hope is for each of us. I don't hear them saying that either. What I hear the coexist people telling me, asking me, is uh, would you just recognize that there is no absolute truth, there is no monopoly on truth, that, that one path, that all the paths ultimately just lead to the same place, and so... Could we just recognize that and embrace that? 
Well, that is the very slippery slope that we've slid down so that so that having embraced that our our culture now rejoices that everyone simply does what is right in their own eyes that there is no absolute truth and uh, you just do whatever feels right for you uh, however you think is just fine so this this version of good karma and that's a that's a word most associated with the Buddhist tradition. And it, it essentially just boils down to karma, just essentially boils down to you sow uh, what you reap, essentially. And that's just kind of a universal truth. Uh, Buddhism has no personal God. It's the, it's a, uh, the, the salvation in Buddhism is that there's a collective consciousness of all living things. So we need to get rid of these bodies so we can get into the, the flow. <clears throat> but but that good karma of just em- embracing uh, everything as true is a step back from what John Lennon uh, considered the way of peaceful coexistence. John wanted us to imagine a world where there was nothing to live for and so certainly nothing to, to die for, just uh, uh, moment by moment or even just a day by day living for the day kind of existence and there are people who most certainly do live for the day as a matter of fact sometimes it is desperate that they just take one moment at a time because they have come to recognize in their life that there is a there is something better beyond drinking and getting the next fix And so if they can just get through this moment, they believe that there is a better life coming when they are sober and clean. They believe that there is something worth living for because there was a time in their life that they would have died for that next drink or that next fix. And they see something not only worth living for beyond that, they see something worth dying for too. And for folks who are just living for their next breath, well, I would say you must be in hospice care. And they're just easing the pain as you pass from dust to dust. So as I thought about our caramelized cultural climate, I thought I was really clever at that, caramelized with a K. In light of our confession of faith as expressed in the creed named after Athanasius, I would have sworn, I would have sworn that the bumper sticker I would, said, my dog ate your karma. I was sworn that that was what the bumper sticker said. And so I put that into Google Images to find uh, that bumper sticker, so I would put it up on the screen. But this bumper sticker does not exist because it's this bumper sticker. My karma just ran over your dogma. Now that actually makes sense in terms of the pun. My car ma, just ran over your dog ma. You get it now? That actually makes sense in terms of the words, whereas my dogma ate your karma really doesn't make any sense. Except I thought it was funny. I, I thought, thought it was all funny. funny. But when, when the, the world, world hears my dog made your comment, they, they think it's funny in an odd, offensive kind of way. Because that is just, dogma is just bad karma, brother. And my karma ate, my karma ran over your dogma. It's just another version of coexist. There is no such thing as true truth. And when they say the dogma makes for bad karma, the irony is they say that rather dogmatically. So keep it to yourself. And there's another irony of the coexistence, folks, is that for each of those, Muslim, uh, and the the peace sign was there, so it's Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist, Christian, and in all genders, that was the E in there. That's the I. No, it's E. It's E in there. Live together. Um, 
What? what? That, that each of those, those groups need their own little bumper, bumper sticker. sticker. They, they need their own internal bumper, bumper sticker. sticker. Can, Can we, we just get, get along? Because you, you have the Sunni and the Shiite Muslims. You have the uh, yeah, Buddhists. You, you have, have the Theravada and Tibetan Buddhists. You have the ultra-Orthodox and the Zionist Jews. And you have the evangelical and mainline Christians. And you could double up on all those just by putting the conservative or liberal in front of each of them. And then you got the whole spectrum, the whole gamut. Uh, so here's, here's what I came up with with the Christian coexist bumper sticker. All that matters is a personal relationship with Jesus. There you go. There's your Christian coexist bumper sticker. I'm going to make millions. Um, uh, once I get that, my dog makes your car out there. People put it on their car just because it makes no sense. You know, you know, when Jesus, Jesus walked this earth, he had, a, he had a personal relationship with lots of people. Um, and lots of people had their own idea about who Jesus is. Some said he's Elijah, come back from the dead. Others just another prophet, a great teacher. And then he asked his disciples, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter seemed to get it right. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus affirmed that, indeed, Peter, that wasn't revealed. You didn't figure that out on your own. That was revealed to you by my Father in heaven. And so then Jesus begins to talk about how he's going to suffer and die. And Peter just won't hear that. He, he takes him aside and says, what are you talking about? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And for that very reason, you will not suffer and die. Because Peter had in his own mind what it meant that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And what that should mean. What that should mean you're here in this world to do. Let me try to explain that to you, Jesus. Let me, Let me try, try to make, make it clear, clear Jesus, why you're here and what you're supposed to be doing. Everyone had their own idea about who Jesus is or who he isn't. He was a threat to some, and we just need to get rid of him. You know, a year or so ago, Bonnie told me that there was a sixth grader who still believed in Santa Claus. So who's... Well, uh, well, there are no sixth graders here, so there doesn't need to be a... Well, wait. So I used to believe in Santa Claus. Do you, do you, do you still believe? Put, put your hands over your ears. Who's going to tell these kids one day that Santa Claus was just an overblown effort to honor a Christian bishop named Nicholas? who had great generosity and loved to give toys to children. Do you know why Santa Claus became such an important piece of our Christmas tradition? Because God, taking on flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, just couldn't make that Christmas magic happen year after year. Despite what all the Scripture talks about, God being the giver of every good and perfect gift, I guess Jesus just couldn't give our children an Xbox. So we needed good old Saint Nick. And that's the kind of relationship some believers have with Jesus. Because the only reliable truth is science, right? And science has made very clear to us that the truth, we are so wise, we figured out the truth that dead people stay dead. It's a cold, hard fact. So Jesus isn't bodily resurrected. That's just good science. But the Spirit of Christ lives on. And we believe that the Spirit of Christ lives on in us, so we are going to pursue justice and peace and what I've observed is that their version of justice and peace, they believe, and I think somewhat dogmatically, is Jesus' version of justice and peace reincarnated. So we're going to take it to the streets. Because they pretty much, I think, decided that the Apostle Paul, who is a misogynist and homophobic, does not speak for God. 
So when the Apostle Paul says, if Christ is not bodily raised from the dead, you are still in your sin, they just dismiss it right out of hand. First of all, because sin isn't really the problem. We know better than that. Sin, sin is a construct that the church hierarchy established to hold people in guilt and shame to keep control. It was such an ingenious conspiracy those first century Christians put together. It's just unfortunate that the people who first spun it out all lost their lives in, by violent death because of the, the lie they perpetuated that Jesus is bodily risen from the dead. Jesus claimed to be God. People took offense at that then. People take offense at that now. The Apostle John, if he still has any credibility left with folks here in this age and time, says, if you do not believe Jesus is God in the flesh, you are anti-Christ. And the spirit of anti-Christ is strong in the world and even stronger today. And then they name a creed after Athanasius because even after centuries, people are still arguing, still saying, no, no, Jesus isn't God. Jesus is God, but He's not really a person. No, there's just one God. The others aren't really gods. And so the church came together and said, this is the Christian faith. And at least three times in that creed, as that creed sets forth, we worship one God in three persons, and the second person of this trinity took on flesh in the person of Jesus, the Christ, crucified, risen, ascended Lord of all, that this is the Christian faith, and, and he says in this creed at, at least three times in three different ways, that this is the Christian faith which, except a man believe faithfully, he cannot be saved. Well, can I just have a personal relationship with Jesus? Well, a personal relationship is critical. If you're going to live under his gracious rule, you should know him. Because he knows you. If you're going to live in his kingdom, you should know what that kingdom life is all about. So you should have regular conversations with the king. How then should I live under your rule, gracious Jesus? What would you have for me, merciful Jesus? And Jesus wants what we all want. Accept me for who I claim to be. Accept me for who I am. God in the flesh, crucified, risen, and ascended, Lord of all. It's the plea of every angry teenager. Just let me be me. You don't understand me. Let me be me. Why don't you come back when you're 32? And it's the lament of far too many spouses. You know, it is, it is absolutely crazy when a spouse leaves and says, well, you're not the person I married. Of course not. You married a figment of your imagination. Now, do you suppose you could love me? Love me try that for the next seven years. It's the plea of Jesus to you and to me to the whole world because he is the only person who knows exactly who he is, what he's all about, and what matters. He has never for a moment needed to go find himself. Rather, from the time he was conceived and born, he was busy about his father's business, and for the first 30 years of his life, all he was doing was to saying, according to your word, Father, what would you have me do that I may give glory to you and manifest that glory in this world that all people might come to you to know and have that relationship that I have with you? We have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ in order to live under His gracious rule in His kingdom. And that will only happen as the Holy Spirit indwells us. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, 
believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to Him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the Gospel and enlightened me with His gifts and keeps me in the one true faith. It is the Holy Spirit who opens the eyes of our hearts to see that Jesus is the way. The path is narrow. Jesus, no one comes to the Father except through me. And Jesus is the truth embodied because all truth, all truth comes from God. Indeed. Science does seek to reveal the truth, to uncover the truth, not to reveal it. Our faith is revealed. It's only gonna, we're only going to know if God makes it known to us. But God created the universe, and now there is a truth discoverable, observable, and, and so all truth derives from God. He, I am the truth, and I am the life, because it is the the claim of Christianity, the understanding of Christianity, the life of Christianity, that God designed us to live in relationship with Him, filled with the fullness of that Trinity love, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, because love always gives itself away so that the fullness of life, the abundant life, a life filled with joy is going to be as God-centered people in the way of Jesus Christ with the very life of Christ manifesting in them will find the fullness of joy as they give expression to God's love in service to their neighbor and in loving one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. That is just hard for us to believe, though. That is, that is counterintuitive. It takes the Holy Spirit to bring us to that place of faith, to truly believe that Jesus, God in the flesh, is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is the reason for our hope we don't have to try to convince anyone, persuade anyone, but we do need to be prepared to give an answer when someone asks for the reason for my hope that one day we will live on a restored earth in perfect harmony and unity, one with another. Because of Jesus. And we seek to live and manifest that love and life even now, that by the leading and power of the Holy Spirit, we are doing God's will on earth, even as it's done in the heavenlies, awaiting for that day when the visible presence of Jesus fills this universe. We see Him face to face. We are filled with the fullness of His love and reign with Him on the new earth. Rejoice and be glad yours is the kingdom of God, where God's Dogma eats our karma, so God might receive glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, and in future generations forever and ever. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we rejoice with those celebrating birthdays and I think an anniversary. Let's see. Yeah, uh, Judy Nicholson and Jesse Williams, birthdays, Richard Boyd, Linda Walsack, uh, Ron Maturi, happy birthday, Ron, and William Streetman, celebrating anniversaries, or Don and Cindy Gilbert, and John and Nancy Lynn Lovick. How many years, John, have you been married? 33? Congratulations. We want to give thanks to the choir for uh, their service to the Lord, edifying our worship as they are going to take a little break during the summer here. Uh, some of our missionaries celebrating birthdays as we close out May are Megan Fetter in Eurasia, David Bush in Asia, and Philip Magnus in Africa. And uh, to update the prayers in the bulletin, we have a praise report that uh, Betty Lochran's daughter, granddaughter-in-law, uh, her, she, they, all the cancer is gone. She doesn't need to undergo any further treatment. We thank God for that. Um, Barney Kleist went home to be with Jesus, so that now uh, 
uh, Barney and uh, Tom and Chuck can go out and collect stuff off the heavenly streets. So they're going to let us know when, when service are over in Oviedo, there at St. Luke's. Uh, we've been praying in our bulletin uh, as we're praying for those who have no church home or don't have that relationship with Jesus or what it means to live under his gracious rule. We've been asking the Lord for the opportunity to baptize uh, more children. It's, well, it's in our weekly that we send out. I don't see it here. Um, but we've been praying for that. We've had, uh, we'll have four baptisms here come uh, by the end of July. Um, so now we need to actually pray that we can disciple these children and, and, and uh, make a deeper connection, that it moves beyond just God's claim of them, bringing them into the family, but they actually now uh, uh, can experience what it means to grow up in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then as we have our assembly this morning, our congregational assembly, we want to pray that uh, for our leadership in the congregation, that uh, the Lord give us wisdom as to how then we shall be church in this particular day, at this particular time. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge of God. We thank you for revealing yourself to us. We thank you that you have revealed yourself to us as a God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and that love is witnessed in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we thank you that you poured that love into our hearts and you commissioned us, all authority has been given you, and you have authorized us to make disciples. It is with great joy that uh, in baptism, you have uh, brought us into the kingdom, that we are reborn children of God. We rejoice, Lord God, to be able to share that grace with uh, children who come to this place, with parents who bring their children, with adults who want every gift of God, and all the grace that you would give, Lord God. Um, and we pray, Lord, that you would help us to better connect with those baptized children, to their families, and that their families would most certainly uh, count it the greatest privilege they have to raise children in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we pray, Lord, that we would make meaningful connections there as we seek to be the church that you called us to be to the praise of your glorious grace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, it is very clear throughout Scripture that leadership matters. And Jesus is head of the church, and he's the one who said he built it. And he's going to build it on the foundation of the apostles and prophets and that the Holy Spirit would gift all those, Lord God, uh, who are part of the body of Christ so that the body might be built up in love. So I pray, Jesus, that the Holy Spirit makes clear to each of us what is our gift for that building, Lord God. And I, I know that as we all start to use those gifts, uh, Lord God, that, that we will have no lack in this body uh, all to the praise of your glorious grace. Lord, in your mercy. We do thank you for all who uh, you have authorized as civil servants to curb the course outbreak of evil in this world and to give a voice to those who otherwise would not be heard. We pray, Lord God, that you would give those who govern wisdom and understanding that truth and justice might prevail in our land and lawlessness might indeed be kept at bay. Lord, in your mercy. We ask for a long memory to recall those who gave the full measure of devotion to our country's call to serve, to provide security, and that they serve faithfully even unto death in the protection of freedoms and in the defense of our land. We thank you, Lord God, on this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, there, we have loved ones who have died in service when their country called them, Lord God. We have friends, and uh, we just lift up a prayer of thanks now in the prayers of our heart. Lord, in your mercy, we do rejoice with those who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, asking that you open the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing on them that they cannot contain it all, but find increasing joy in sharing it. Lord, in your mercy. 
Lord, we thank you for your healing ministry among us, witnessed in Samantha, experienced through the surgery, witnessed in Barney, Lord God, who has come home to you, and now he waits for what we all wait for, Lord, to get his resurrection body. So we lift up those who are ailing in their body, Lord God. We also lift up those who are afflicted in spirit, in their soul, Lord. We pray that you would uphold them in the truth, that it is at your right hand that they are established. And we pray, Lord, that you would gladden their hearts through your comfort, your peace, your healing, your hope, that their tongues might rejoice and give thanks, and that they would have an opportunity to share with others the hope that is in them. All to the praise of your glorious grace, Lord, in your mercy. And we thank you for the privilege of coming to your table, Jesus. We're in with none of this bread and wine. Past these guilty lips of ours, we can receive the very body and blood given and shed for us for the forgiveness of all our sin. We pray, Lord God, that it is your love, your life, that would consume us, Lord, that as we return to the places where we live, work, and play, we would, everything we do, Lord God, give glory to you. Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. We look forward to that day when he gathers us from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for you, to you alone, we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. They've begun a construction on another Garuna Christian school. It's number 10 in Kampong. And uh, Foothills Lutheran Church in Scottsdale, Arizona has funded that project and we're glad we can be part of that we are continuing to receive a little video next week on the proclaimers faith comes by hearing as the mission offerings come in are going toward that as we have sponsored our 14 children in the garuna school system we're thankful for that um we're gonna if you would uh try to start wearing your name tag If you don't, there's a board out there where we used to put them. If you check and see if yours is there, if it's not, uh, put it in the red book, name tag, and your name, how you want it on there. Do you want a clip or do you want it on a string that goes around your neck? You can put a clip or a string. Those are your two choices. Okay? We always give you a choice. Is there anything else? Huh? No? Do you know that person's name? I'm going to put you right on the spot. Do you know that person's name right there? No. Do you know that person's name? What's your name? You think it's Susan. What about that person back there in the red shirt? All right. No, we don't know everyone's name. So there. Yeah, we don't. You know about, you know pretty much everyone here, but that is what we need. And how many of us remember a name? You know? Well, and even I forget, last week I met Jennifer. By the time we got to the altar, I thought it was Sally. I don't know how that happened. I don't know. So, and they don't know our name. So this is a way that uh, we can just help build that fellowship, because if you don't know each other's name. It's hard. That's the starting point. Live in peace, serve the Lord.